think because it's such an integral part of the maths curriculum and what a mathematician is, as well as being one of those aims in the national curriculum. And as we were doing book looks and we were walking around the school, I think it was really obvious that it was something that children needed to develop from speaking to them. Yeah, so we found quite a few things. We found that um, children weren't exposed to real, genuine problems that got them thinking and challenged them in that way. Um, and we also found their resilience was really low and the motivation to actually push through and keep going. And a lot of them just relied on that adult support and were like focused on the answer rather than the process. So really, they really struggled to get that problem solving out of it. And I think some of that was that it was also clear that we needed to develop staff and their understanding of what a really good problem looked like so that we could scaffold that process and children could, could become much more independent. I think people often think about um, typical tasks as being something like Jenny has four bags of apples and Fred has nine bags of apples, so how many bags of apples do they have all together? And those types of word problems really just practice procedures that children have, children have been taught um, and they, they follow a rehearsed strategy really. Um, but genuine problem solving is something where there's no rehearsal or routine that can really take you to get into the crux of solving that problem. So this example here we found was a good one um, because it, there was no rehearsed methods for the children to do it with. Um, and it also required children to discuss and talk around the problem before actually getting to grips with it. Um, and we also found there was quite a lot of strategies to um, work it out and go about it. It wasn't just one obvious answer. So other good problems are when there's more than one solution. Um, it requires to add another layer to planning and working together collaboratively. Um, one of the most effective has been removing the constraint of the exercise book. Um, children have chosen to work in lots of different ways, either on whiteboards or maybe big sheets of flip chart paper. And just having that large open space to work on really encourages that mathematical talk and children working collaboratively together. Um, it's also made sure that children can review what they're doing because they can see everything on one big open space. Um, and that's been a really good way um, of them adapting that plan that they've made as they go. We then collate all of that work into a floor book so the children can go back and reflect on what they've done and next time consider those things that they've learned into their planning process. So I think adult modelling is key. Um, for example, a teacher modelling how they might start tackling a problem, um, thinking of their initial thought process, how what they um, think about by looking at the problem and then actually you know even realizing that's not the, ta the tactic the strategy they, they're going to use and how they're going to change and how that's going to look um, all of those things um, are the things we want the children to do so actually the adult modeling them will show that good procedure um, if adults regularly doing that um, with their thinking it will help the children to develop that confidence to do so I think this has been one of the biggest things for us. We knew it had to be school-wide priority, so um, we joined a network of some other local schools who were also interested in developing problem solving. Um, and with that, we were able to look at lots of different strategies and the different types of problems that we could look at. Um, we trialled a lot of things in our own classrooms together first, um, and we regularly spoke to each other, um, and we had staff meeting time to be able to get staff together to discuss what had gone well and maybe what they needed to improve a little bit further. Um, and then the following academic year, we laid out a, um, a programme of CPD really for staff um, where they could build on all of that work that they'd, that they'd tried in their own classroom the year before. Yeah, so to do that, we drew upon um, recommendation three of the um, Improving Mathematics report. And in those meetings, we modelled the teaching, the strategies to problem solving um, that we tested in our own classrooms first. Um, so we ensured by like, support and um, by planning activity that, that all staff could actually have a go at the problems together and then we're able to discuss approaches between different solutions and then between those meetings we provided prompts, reassurances to staff to um, support them and remind them of what we learned together in the um, CPD. And I think that was important that we included support staff in that time mm -hmm. as well so that they were prepared so that when they were supporting children that could be a very organic process around all of the adults.
Mine would definitely be to choose your problem carefully so that you know that there's uh, some different possible solutions or different methods that children can apply to solve them. Yeah, and I think for me, actually, to do the problem yourself first for the children. Um, this way you can actually see what strategies the children might use, any misconceptions that will arise, or actually any prompts or questions you might want to ask the children when they're doing it. So top tips, choose your problem carefully and have a go at solving it yourself before you give it to the pupils.